Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen Simon, and welcome back to C Sharp Corner Live Show. In this episode of Ask Me Anything, we have Shell joining us from all the way United States, who's going to talk about on how you can build a rapid POC. Uh, Shell is someone uh, who is an entrepreneur and chief innovation officer in the digital industry, having built innovation products and services at Capital One. Intel Corp and Fortune 500 firms. Uh, having said that, I will bring Shell in the show. Uh, hi, Shell. Welcome. Hey. Good morning. How are good, you doing? Afternoon, good evening. <laughs> so we all are joining from different time zones, right? What is your time zone? I'm in uh, Philadelphia on the east coast of US. Bro, very near to New York, right? Very near yeah. to New York. All right, so why don't you shall go ahead and introduce yourself on who you are, what you do, and what particularly we are going to talk in today's live broadcast. Absolutely. So um, first off, um, thanks for uh, thanks for having me and, and being, uh, being with us today. I also sincerely hope that you and your family are in good health and spirit, considering everything. So, and thanks to uh, Mahesh and uh, Stephen and the C Sharp team for having me. Um, so what I want to do is um, I'm actually going to run through um, a, um, a deck. So I'll switch over and share my screen. So I'm going to do it right now. Um, and uh, if you just follow me there. Um, yeah. So basically, what I'm going to do today is to talk to you uh, about how to build a rapid proof of concept. All right. And, um, and the background that I have uh, that will hopefully make it meaningful is that um, I worked in Silicon Valley for many years. Um, I was part of the team at IMG Direct that revolutionized banking, uh, and we built many, many rapid POCs and uh, feature sets while there. And uh, my 15 minutes of fame was that I, uh, I managed a mobile channel, and we were the fastest bank to 1 million mobile users, and uh, we got to ring the bell at the stock exchange. So. Uh, and we also, as part of that journey, we got awards from Apple for the best mobile onboarding experience. Um, and then we went to Capital One, where we uh, basically moved a customer base of 45 million users from, um, from the analog world to the digital world, if you will. Um, and then just to keep fresh, I always take a class every, every year. Um, I'm a certified digital disruptor by Harvard. Uh, AI from MIT, design thinking from Stanford. And uh, for fun, I like to ride my motorcycle, uh, I cook, and uh, I shoot sporting plays competitively. Soccer, I'm playing less so because I'm getting old and injured. But um, <laughs> um, but here's basically um, the outline of what I want to do today. Uh, so what I wanted to do is uh, take, uh, uh, think of this as about a 30 minute session. I'm going to spend 20 minutes talking about how to how to build a rapid POC, um, the product cycle, the tools that you should have, and the approach you should take. I'm going to give you four examples of POCs that I've been involved with. We're going to take a quiz, and then we'll do Q and A. So, um, so 30 minutes or so. Um, and the bottom line is, there is no better way to visualize an idea than to build a proof of concept. Absolutely none. Because most people sell, will tell you, I can hear you, but show me. You have something to show me. We, we work with clients and executives uh, all day long, and every one of them is like, I hear you, I see your PowerPoint, but can you show me? So if you think about it, Walt Disney said it best. If you can dream it, you can find a way to present it. And if you think about it, he took a mouse and a duck, and he created a $130 billion company. <laughs> so um, with that, um, let's talk about the product cycle. Um, so initially, you typically have an idea, right? And then you're like, OK, that was a good idea. I was thinking about the wheel, but what can I do with it? Well, you could, you could shape, shape it up. and make it into an actual tire. Now you have a prototype. Okay, that's meaningful, but 
I actually, what if you add some metal bars, two wheels and a seat? Okay, now I have a bicycle. And that to me is an example of a POC. It's a working uh, model of something that you can visualize. But then you know how it goes. It's like, yeah, a bicycle is nice, but what I really want is transportation to get around town and ride around the countryside on the weekend. And that's what we call MVP, minimum viable product. And then you go, okay, well, that's also pretty nice, but um, what, what is the final destination? Well, it's typically 1.0. And 1.0 is typically something that has all the bells and the features that you had in mind as part of your uh, visioning for this product. So prototype kind of gives you the layout of what it is. The POC shows everyone else what it is. It may or may not function properly. MVP has to have the core features. And 1.0 has all the bells and whistles. Today, we're gonna focus on the POC part because unless you get to the POC stage, there is no way you can move through MVP and 1.0. And in this case, I happen to like motorcycles. Uh, the 1.0, I mean, is a beauty. Come on, it's 1.0, that's when you issue your press release and have the big un unveil. It's colorful, it's sassy, it's expensive. And if you can't control it, it will run away from you. I call it the ex-wife. Um, now, I'm going to talk to you about the tools that you need to build yourself a $100 innovation lab. That's right. I've been part of building a $9 million innovation lab. I built a $100,000 innovation lab. But I'm going to teach you how you can create your own personal innovation lab for less than 100 bucks. Here's what you need. Um, you need markers and stickies. I have them next to me here on my desk. I, I um, have it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. $15. Yeah. Uh, a notebook. I have it. Okay. Um, I also have it. Yeah. There you go. A whiteboard is extremely useful because uh, I have a, I actually have a seven foot by five foot uh, whiteboard here in my home office and it's filled all the time. I erase, add new stuff. It's useful. And then here's what I recommend. If you have a platform that you like, say you're focused on Facebook uh, or on the iWatch or on any other platform, um, you can go and search for prototyping templates and they give you the sketches and the iconography for that uh, platform that you uh, prefer to work on, iOS, Android, et cetera. And to me, that's a pretty pretty good tool and investment. And then when you want to present your um, idea, you need to put it down in either PowerPoint or Keynotes. If you go to Theme Forest, um, that's, the, that's the ultimate destination. You can find templates for probably eight to $10 and up, and they are pre-made. And uh, it's it's pretty easy to fill them in, and you know they have color schemes, so it's it's really useful. And I guarantee you, if you go through this a few times and write down your ideas and pros and cons and you know competition and what the vision is, you're gonna get really good at um, at doing these. So you're gonna start doing it faster and faster. Then we have the creativity side, okay. And then what does that mean? Well, sometimes you just need to find a source of creativity to help drive your idea forward. And I'm gonna share with you what I do, okay? Um, here's my personal stack of magazines, okay? And as you can see, I'm a, I'm a little bit off the rails. I got motorcycles, alcohol, and guns, okay? I've sprinkled in some some uh, magazines just to make myself look good, like The Economist <laughs> and Forbes and, uh, <laughs> and Architectural Digest. But the reason I'm sharing this is I find it inspiring to go to Architectural Digest and look at, say, a house that is a minimalistic house. And then I go, man, if I could take that house, the design and the look of that house, 
and apply that to a mobile app, I mean, that's how clean I want my mobile app to look. So, so to me, that's what, uh, that's the thing that I'm not looking for, but that's a benefit of looking across industries. I clearly also subscribe to many more blogs, but these sometimes I'll, I like to have a magazine in front of me. So, so this is my personal stack. I highly recommend reading uh, magazines from other industries. And talk about that. If you want creativity, um, this picture is actually from the first hackathon that we did at ING Direct, okay? And this is, honestly, it's 11 years ago. But um, the idea is when you're approaching a problem, say you're sitting down with your friends and you're talking about an idea and collaborating and trying to make it happen, uh, it's very useful to think about, again, other industries. For example, let's say that you're launching a curbside delivery app right now. You want to create the next generation curbside delivery app for food because people are at home right now, self-isolating or quarantining. You may say, how would Amazon solve this, right? How would Harley Davidson solve it? How would Flipkart solve it? They may already be doing it, but what is it that they did that is so amazing? And then you can try to replicate it, improve on it. So to look outside your industry is extremely powerful and ask yourself, great, we have this idea, but how would someone else like a Harley Davidson or Sony, pick your own favorite brand, solve it. <clears throat> and then um, I'm gonna quickly talk about prototyping. Remember, that's a step before the proof of concept, the POC. But failing fast is important. I don't know if you knew, but every product before it gets to 1.0 has had on average of 3,000 ideas thrown at it, either from the ideation stage, through the prototyping, through the POC phase, through MVP. So think about that. So I know we're talking about doing this fast. The reason you want to fail fast is you want to move on. It's not failing, it's really learning. But the tech term is fail fast. Um, so talk about prototyping. I know we're talking about rapid prototyping, but I want to show this because it is simply an amazing story. I'm sure you recognize James Ty Dyson uh, with a Dyson vacuum cleaner. Did you know that he built 5,127 prototypes? Think about it. And they all sucked. However, and it took him 15 years. However, number 5,128 is the one that moved on from POC to MVP to create a multi-million dollar industry. So 15 years, over 5,000 prototypes. That's a sign of perseverance, okay? We don't have 15 years. I'm just showing this to demonstrate that there are people out there that are um, incredible in terms of pursuing their dream. So uh, I'm gonna show you uh, four POCs in order of investment from low to high, okay? A POC can be low or high fidelity. It can be functional, non-functional. It can be a 3D print. It can be anything that you think is good enough to showcase to someone to tell your story. And about telling your story, it is extremely critical that you can tell a story around it. Otherwise people go, oh, it looks good. I have no idea what it is. So using a video to communicate your story is critical, if not a requirement. So hence, I have four videos. I'm gonna share them with you. But before we dive in, I do wanna let you know that a POC can be any size, right? It can be any dollar amount. It can be any effort, meaning resources. So in a corporate setting uh, with my clients, I try to tell them 30 days, 30K. That's a rule of thumb, okay? I worked on POCs that have been six months and 500K for a corporate client. I don't view that as a POC because it's that too long. So a POC to me is 30 days, 30K. That's a rule of thumb. For you and I at a personal level, we may be more looking at the red dot that's three to 5K, but it's, it may still take 30 days just because it's less expensive doesn't mean it doesn't take longer. So hopefully this demonstrates that 
a POC can vary in size based on effort and dollar and contribution. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm in this uh, video, but I do want to show it to you because it's voice based. I think voice is the next big thing. Um, so this is, I'll give you a, a, uh, the backdrop. It's an Alexa skill that we built for a multinational global logistics client. They ship cars from one continent to another. So they take a car coming out of the factory, a Nissan in Japan, put floor mats in it, put the stereo in it, finishes it, and then ship it to Brazil. They take a BMW from Germany, do the same thing, put floor mats, trailer hitch if it needs, and sends it to Norway or Australia. So we were visual, uh, we were doing a visioning session with them, and uh, this is a voice-based demo. So I want you to focus on the ability to use voice in uh, connected with a corporate system, such as um, uh, inf uh, not infrastructure, but inventory, okay? So here's what it is. It took us five days. The cost was zero, meaning uh, there were two of us working on it. So call it time and material, but, but zero for the sake of this example. Here we go. I'm walking into my office. It's 2020, December. Prometheus just went live, right? And Alexa, launch Prometheus. Welcome to WWS Prometheus. What can I help you with? What is my forecast for tomorrow? For April 12th, 2019, 2,107 vehicles are expected. Based on volume, you should schedule four additional installers. What would you like to do? You can say schedule installers or maintain staffing. Sch schedule installers. I have scheduled four additional installers. Based on the work orders scheduled, your Nissan Altima floor mat inventory will drop below alert level in 48 hours. Should I place an order to get to your target inventory level? Yes. Okay. What is my PNL as of today? Month to date, you are tracking 1% ahead of plan on revenues and 2% ahead on profit margin. Would you like to view the finance dashboard? No. Okay, what else can I help with? How are my drivers performing? Of your 35 total drivers, Ricky Bobby is your top performer and has driven over 1,000 hours incident-free. Would you like to order cake for him or schedule a happy hour for Ricky and the other top four drivers at Bourbon Street Blues for Friday? Schedule happy hour. Okay, I have scheduled happy hour for Friday and added Josh and Kyle as optional on the invitation. Would you like to conference and Josh and Kyle to inform? So. I hope that demonstrates what voice can do in a corporate environment. Next, I'm going to show you um, a quick one. It's around uh, using the AR kit from Apple. And uh, the idea was, hey, can this be used to look at an item from a virtual catalog, place it in my own kitchen so I can see what it looks like before I buy it? Uh, it took us about a week, and it cost us about $1,200 in development cost. So again, this is my personal kitchen. If I walk into my kitchen, this is what you'll see. And if, you're, if you've got good eyes, you can tell that I have a bear keg there already. So uh, now, that, now that you know that, you know I ride motorcycles, drink whiskey, and, uh, and have a bear keg in my kitchen. And if you're really good, you can tell I already have an espresso machine on my right side. But the idea here is, hey, I want to place this virtual item, see if I like it. Yeah, red that looks too, too too Ferrari for me. I may want to switch the color to black because that's what I want. So okay, now I got it in black. Uh, let me place it. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I think I'll order that one instead of the the one that I have. And hopefully by tomorrow, Amazon can deliver it on my doorstep. Um, next one is it's one that's actually real time. This is what we're working on right now. And uh, what this is. It's for the current COVID-19 environment. It's uh, thermal imaging of individuals walking into a factory or an office setting where it scans your temperature. So this we are launching as an MVP actually in 
um, in about 10 days. So anyway, I want to share with you. So, so again, that's coming soon to a theater near you. This one is a platform that we built uh, actually probably five years ago, if not six. And it was for a client that wanted a new recruiting platform for college students specifically. So there is a mobile side to it where the student enters their digital footprint. And then there is an enterprise side where the enterprise HR team will look and search for talent. So this is a POC, this is a, a video, but we built a fairly functional POC out of it. With the R2 Talent mobile app, you can pitch yourself to top companies right from your phone. It's easy to complete your digital profile directly in the app. Just add important stats and fill out a brief personality test to find the right match for your career ambition. Companies can find you in their R2 Talent Dashboard where they'll make decisions using our unique scorecard system. Candidate comparisons and video interviews. R2 Talent the next generation of career engagement. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, so I just, just a couple of things before um, we hop into the quiz. And that is, I like for you to, for every idea you have, you should be filling in something like this and call it a, 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 stay, a step one of a startup pitch deck. Um, what is the problem? What are you trying to fix? And what's the opportunity? And it really helps to write it down because it helps clear your mind and it helps start having a discussion in your own head about whether or not this is a good idea. And then try to describe the current process and what's wrong with it. I call it the villain. Who is the problem child and what is it? Um, and what would be the objections from uh, not friends necessarily, but an investor? Like if you say, I want to build a high-speed bullet train, right, from New York to DC, great idea. It's just going to be a trillion dollars. Don't think it's going to happen. And what's the ideal solution or outcome? What is the best in the market already out there if there is something? And how can we do something different or piggyback on that? And this is really important. Do a Google search or search in the app stores, because I can tell you how many friends have come up to me and said, hey, Shell, what do you think? And I asked, have you looked in the app store? We go to the app store and there are 54 apps already there, okay? That doesn't mean it's not a good idea. It's just do some homework. And then get on the template and start mapping out a visual, okay? You have to start, and I'll give an example, and I hope Mahesh don't mind. A few years ago, uh, we didn't know too much about virtual reality, AR, mixed reality. So Mahesh bought a HoloLens, and a week later, we started the Mid-Atlantic uh, Mixed Reality User Group. Within a month, we had 60 users, and before you knew it, we had 200. And we did get in, invite, invited to uh, go to the Microsoft Innovation Lab. Now, clearly, Mahesh would be anyway, because he's a, a multi-year MVP. But uh, we were able to get many, many client leads coming into us because we started this meetup. And then this is a personal one. A few years ago, I didn't know how to cook, okay? But I view cooking as a source of inspiration myself when it comes to new dishes, how to plate them. I treat it like a POC. This is a POC dish. I'm not sure how it's going to go. So 
Um, last year we did, uh, we cooked uh, Christmas dinner for uh, a hospital. We made 24 turkeys. This is my fellow chef. And we fed over 500 first responders, nurses, police officers, doctors. Um, and then, not that it matters, but I did get featured in a magazine last fall with my favorite dish. So, um, so if you stick to what you like, um, good things will happen, okay? So when it comes to a POC, you need to get started, you need to get sticky notes, you need to get friends, you need to get dirty, all right? So now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a quiz, okay? I'm gonna give you some instructions. But before we do, I have a health warning, okay? And I don't know if there are any movie movie fans out there, but listen, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you want. If you're looking for money or a refund, I can tell you I don't have any money. But what I do have are a particular set of skills, a set of POC skills I've acquired over a very long career, skills that makes me a web host for people like you. If you score perfectly on this quiz, that will be the end of it. I will not come look for you and I will not pursue you. But if you don't score perfectly, I will track you down. I will find you and I will make you take the quiz one more time. <laughs> that's scary. Are, that's, that's very scary, Shell. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's the drill. Do not take the quiz on the device you are on. If you do, you will get dropped out of this live stream. You will need a second device, okay? Ideally a phone. That will be your input device where you enter the answers, okay? And then you're gonna follow me on this screen. In the next minute, I'm gonna give you a URL and a pin code. Use that on your phone or second device, okay? And then you will, you will be asked, you'll be given a random nickname. It is anonymous, so you may be, your nickname may be Jelly Bean, okay? No one's gonna know who it is. So pick, you have to pick a nickname and uh, it does it for you. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna jump over to, um, so here's the screen that you're gonna see, okay? So on your second device, second device, I want you to go here, okay? Go to Kahoot, I'm gonna, I'm going to do this with you, okay? And we are going to play the game. So, can you guys can you guys see the pin number here? Yeah, I can see. Okay. So, as soon as you guys log in, I'm going to see you guys' there's, um, player um, nicknames on the screen. So go to kahoot.it, enter this PIN number. It's 5051327, right? 5051327. So uh, guys are watching, they can also pick from that. Both the there link you go, and we got someone is in. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm joining too. I'm joining too. Okay, code.it. Two players. I'm going to give it a minute. Hopefully, we get a few more. Um, Okay, I'm going to give it a few more minutes. Um, yep. Yep. What do you think? 10 more seconds? Yeah, 10 more seconds is fine. I think uh, there are four players now. Yeah, okay. It's happening. Yep. Five now. I think people uh, people were not ready with the second device, so it's taking them time. Yeah, okay. I'll give it a little bit. Oh, this is fun. We have six. 
You want to run? Wait, wanna, wait, wait. You want to go over it? You're in. You're in. I think I'm in. Uh, we have six now. Mm, what say? Shall we? Shall we start? I think it, it is good. Six is fine. Let's start. Let's go. All right. Okay. Here we go. So again, oh enter your enter your answer on your phone and look at this screen for the question. So here we go. How to build a rapid POC? The quiz of your lifetime. <laughs> So on your phone, this is a poll. This is not a right or wrong. You, it's a poll number. So do you have the best ideas? Do you have the best ideas when you're in the shower, while dreaming, while at work? When do you have your best idea? Hit, hit the corresponding button. Okay, there you go. So we're, we're waiting for three more to uh, finish the game. It's time. You only have 15, 20 seconds. So as of right now, three of us are having the best ideas while walking and relaxing. So for the other three that haven't responded, on your phone, you just touch either one of the answers and it will show up on this screen. OK, maybe the next one will uh, be a little easier. So this is a word cloud. Give me the one word you can think of for innovation. Type it on your mobile phone. There you go. People are filling it in. <laughs> eight, eight. Okay, let's see. All right. That's awesome. Cool. There you go. We have a dreamer. We're sharing our thoughts. We're using our imagination and speed and coming up with new ideas. All right. True or false? So it's one of one of two answers. A POC can be any dollar amount. True or false? Reply on your phone. All right. <laughs> that is correct. It can be any dollar amount. It doesn't matter. I've done a POC for zero. All right. Here's the scoreboard. Classic Koala, whoever that is. Take a screenshot. Hey, that's me. Hey, that's me. Oh, my goodness. That's me. <laughs> okay. Next question. How much money do you need to set up a small innovation lab? 10 bucks, more than 10,000, 500, or about 100? Answer on your phone. Hey, Shell, Classic Cola is me, right? You're going to get me something. <laughs> I'm your host. <laughs> Okay, based on the presentation, it is about a hundred. But um, listen, you can uh, you can do it for sticky notes and a marker. That's fine. Okay, cool. Um, well, we still have a, a, a winner here. Classic Koala is taking this home. Okay, so now this is in order from left to right. Place the product cycle the way we shared it in my presentation. So on your phone, you're going to move the blocks in the right order of what you're seeing on the screen. From left to right. And then there is a blue button below it that you will click when you're done. So three of us have answered this. Four. So move the blocks on your phone in the right order. There you go. Here's the right order. Prototype, POC, MVP, 1.0. OK, there's obviously one person I have to track down after this. <laughs> All right. Classic koala, my dear, my dear, taking it home. Okay, 
What does a rapid POC actually mean? Typically, that is built in less than 30 days, okay? So the cost can be whatever. Remember, we had the, the slide with the different circles. The cost can be anything. But in the corporate and even personal POC environment, I would say it needs to be built in less than 30 days. All right. Okay, last one. What is the most important step in building a rapid POC? All right, the most important step is to get started. That's right, a large budget would be nice. Um, okay, that is basically the quiz. So what I'm gonna do now is hop back, okay? And uh, anyway, was that, uh, was that fun, Simon? Yeah, I mean, I won it, Shell, it was me, <laughs> classy one. I had some 5,000 points with me. <laughs> okay, well, um, celebrate with a chai tea later tonight. <laughs> chai, yeah, chai. <laughs> I have a okay. glass of so hopefully you enjoyed it because part of listening to a boring presentation is to, okay, try to figure out, did I learn something or retain something? So hopefully you enjoyed this little element. So now what I'd like to do is move into um, Q and A. So um, I'm gonna, do you want me to stop sharing or? It's fine, I, it's fine. I can bring you in the beam frame. You can come back. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was a really uh, great slides with uh, the quizzes and all. I think uh, you started with uh, mouse and duck and how they used a simple idea and created a million dollar company. You talked about different stages, prototype, POC, MVP, 1.0. You also shared the resources like themeforest.com. You can just go out there, get inspired by the design. Uh, you also told that it is fine to fail fast right if you're building a prototype it's totally fine and your prototype must also have a story behind it so even that really makes sense um, i love the videos that you showed uh, uh, especially with the alexa uh, that uh, tells if you want to give drivers some happy hours or order some cakes it also tells you about your business uh, finance like you are one percent ahead of your profit margin you talked about ideas that already exist in the play store and how you and Mahesh got started building the HoloLens and eventually you said that you have to start at one moment of time so I think that was a lot to be taken away from the first half right uh, Shell and I literally loved and so is people say that they are really enjoying this session so <laughs> so okay. having said having said that Shell uh how, how, how do you actually come up with ideas? I mean, uh, people people think of building a POC prototype. Well, how do you actually come up with a good idea? Yeah, yeah, good question. So if you look back at uh, the poll, um, the, the question was, when do you have your best ideas, right? You know, yep. while sleeping or, and I don't know if you saw it, no one voted on at work. So think about it, no one had said i have an idea while at work think about it meaning your ideas come to you while walking while sleeping or in the shower right so so basically thanks for the question so basically i walk a lot and i take a lot of showers <laughs> 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 but um but i again i want to refer back to the magazine stack that image because i have a lot of hobbies and interests so for me um i get it by looking at other industries industries to see what's going on um, I subscribe to not every blog, but a lot of blogs, Wired Magazine, Mashable, TechCrunch, and even Kickstarter. If you want uh, an idea source, go and look at Kickstarter and just say, man, that's a crazy good idea. I wish 
I thought of that, or I would like to do something similar. So, um, and then it's also important to filter out early, fail fast, or what may be a good idea or not. So that's what that's the beauty of the template. Like you know, start giving the idea some oxygen, right? And and when you do that, you start realizing, man, maybe it's too. Ex this is a multi-billion-dollar idea. It it won't happen, or you know what? I can do this if I can find five thousand dollars. I can go to Fiverr or Design Crowd and get someone to help me with the idea. So an idea. The bottom line is, an idea is useless if it's only in your head. You have to give the idea oxygen, and collaboration is key. Never do it on your own. Like it's don't do it. So anyway, next question. Do we All have right. A yeah, Shell, I think uh, today the application is facing some issues we also dropped from Facebook for a while. So Slang goes ahead and asks Shell that how do you know when you are at your MVP? OK, perfect. Thank you for the question. Um, that is when you share your MVP. And well, let me spin it back. When you have an MVP, when it's something that you can stand up on a stage and announce and say, we are today we are launching R2 Talent. It is functional. It has the core features, um, and it works. OK, that's MVP. Prototype doesn't necessarily have to be fully functional. But MVP has to be something you can launch into the market. If you look back at the motorcycle, it was a motorcycle. It had two seats. It gets you around town. But it wasn't a Ducati or a Harley Davidson or right. it was a BMW. But it was. It doesn't have all the colors, the bells and whistles, and ABS brakes, and it doesn't have all that. Hopefully, that helps. It's like I think uh, Prashant goes and says that he really enjoyed something to generate idea from POC to 1.0. I think that is something people would really love to take this. The steps that is involved to building a prototype and reaching a 1.0. Uh, Mahesh goes and asks that uh, what is the least time it took you to fail, Shell? <laughs> oh. Um, Probably, probably um, we did we did one. I, I wish I could talk about it because it's it's at a client that I'm with, but we pivoted like within three days. You know, um, you know, like you know what this was an idea. Of, it was computer visioning. Okay. Um, and um, and literally after three days, we said, you know what, this is too complicated for the use case. But the technology can be applied somewhere else. So it's almost never useless, right? It's it's always beneficial because you can pivot. That's the yep. beauty of innovation. That, that's great. That's great. Uh, also, Shell, sometimes people get confused between a POT and a POC. How do these two things, uh, which sound very similar, but in fact, what is the difference between yeah. both of them? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, the difference is probably best described in the um, AR um, POC video that I showed you with the espresso machine. To me, that is more closer to POT because we're actually just proving that technology. Can we get this AR kit to work in my own kitchen? So that it's probably closer to a POT. Yes, we got it to work. Does it have that? Is it able to tell the whole story of how I can order? No, I, I wasn't able to use voice and place the order and get an order confirmation. We don't have a virtual catalog where I can pull it from. So it, it's that one is probably closer to a POT, OK, if that makes sense. POT, yep. you're proving that technology can work. But the whole story about the interaction and user experience hasn't been baked. Uh, learning from that, Rohit says that uh, my experience is that to reach a final POC, we have to repeatedly make a, a POC so that we could make a final. I think he means a repeatedly POT. Uh, T to make make a final POC. Yeah, I think that's what he so, says. Okay, if I understand this, thank you for the question. Um, if I understand the question, is this is where it's critical that you don't just sit there and do it on your own. You collaborate, <laughs> and yeah. if you're if you're in a corporate environment, you have a stakeholder, like like the vice president of logistics, let's say. Okay, yeah. so he or she will be involved, and they will say, you know what? Um, yes. I can take this version of the POC. It's good enough. Like I, I want to, 
I want to go to the CEO and see if we can get funded. Okay. Yeah. So the stakeholder will work with you on, on when the right revision is finished and ready for showtime. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, also, also shell, you told that, uh, uh, we need very limited budget to get started with the your POCs, right? And also you have been doing a lot of POT all the way from home and you t suggest that to go and collaborate. So uh, when working on the POC, do you need a special place or a lab to make your own POC? Yeah, I yeah, here's my lab. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So this one, right? this one, this one, ooh, I do. <laughs> See, thanks for the question. The answer yeah. is no, you don't need a special place. Clearly it helps, okay? But you can start at home by writing down the idea on the whiteboard, right? Um, you can start filling in the startup pitch deck, the template. How do, we, how do we get started with the idea? Write down the problem. What's the ideal outcome? That's the best start. So you don't need a lab. However, when you wanna start tinkering with it, um, depending on what it is, if it's a physical object, uh, there's probably a local maker space that you can go to and they have classes and a community that is dying to get involved. If it's more of a digital project, then maybe you go to fiverr.com or design crowd and try to get a low cost collaborator to work on your idea or mobile app. Um, and then lastly, local universities, that's a great resource to go to them and say, hey, do you guys want a real world problem to tackle? The classes and the, the professors and the students are probably thrilled to get a real life project. The high end um, tier one schools, they charge for it, but there are hundreds of universities below that that would be dying to get involved. I think that's a really good uh, suggestion is going to your local university and education institutes where students are always willing to go work with real time projects. And uh, in most of the cases, they may not charge students to just uh, come up with this paid time and they try to work with the professionals. We have one question again from the viewers uh, and it is by Mahesh. She goes and asks that, how do you actually validate your POCs? Yeah, um, thanks again for the question. Again, I'm going to refer to the stakeholder because um, the reason that 80% of innovation labs fail in a corporate environment is because they didn't connect the dots from the innovation. Sorry, I'll do this from the innovation to the business. If you don't do it, then it's just going to be a cool setting with free coffee and free alcohol uh, with cool furniture and ping pong table, but there's no connection to the business. So it's, it's mission critical that you connect the digital factory, right? To the business so that your sponsors, the VP of logistics will come and say, you know what? I think I'm ready. I'll take that POC, Mahesh. Don't worry about it. It's I, I, I don't need version 5.0. I'll take version 1.0 because it tells the story. So the stakeholder will help you tell, let you know when it's ready. We tend to over design it because, oh my God, what if we add more colors to it? No, it's good enough. 30 days, no more. <laughs> that's, I think uh, that's the mistake where people does it. Even on their prototype, they just go and they would add a lot of features over there. Uh, having said that, uh, Shell, how do you actually decide which features to add to your product? I mean, there's always an hypothesis that this may work, this may not work with the team. So how do you actually decide that at least yeah. for stage one and until 1.0, these features should be there? Sure. Um, so this is kind of um, part of the laying out the pitch deck, if you will, because it helps you say, okay, for 30, next 30 days, what can, what can be done? Can I, if it's a mobile app, can I do registration and uh, five more screens, right? You know, that uh, helps me create a uh, motorcycle delivery app for food. Okay, all right, that's okay. So what I probably need is these three features. I need location, right? I need uh, order, I need a menu to order, right? I need an ordering mechanism and I need a confirmation of delivery and payment. Okay, can you do that in 30 days? If not, then that becomes part of MVP. But for the POC, maybe you can mock up the screens, right? And, and build a video that explains what it is. But it's the user that will tell you. In this case, you can run it by five restaurants owners and they may say, sorry, this, it doesn't work. I need 
this to connect with my inventory or I need this to connect with my POS systems, right? So, and for the rider that rides the motorcycles delivering the food, they may say, can you make it like Uber? Can, can you make it more like Uber? You know, yeah. okay, so now you know these are the features. You know? Yeah, so that's well said, uh, Shell. I think uh, uh, to have a minimum on to looking at the time of how much we can contribute, that really adds on how much features you want to add to a product or in the prototype. Uh, we have already reached 50 minutes, Shell. I think that was a really interesting session. Uh, one last question that I would ask, uh, I mean, people, uh, when people work in a team, when they work in upon a prototype and when they go and pitch to their clients, many a times things do not fall in place the way we plan it, right? It goes totally wrong. You have been in a leadership role. The team sometimes morally breaks. They have show like they spent a lot of time on this. So how, how, how a team should be encouraged when, when things don't fall in place and the POC doesn't go through it? Um, so uh, did you ask how many people or uh, the culture? I, I, asked, I, asked, I asked when POCs fail, right? Oh, okay. Many of them yeah. pitch the clients and teams very feel like they feel disappointed. They feel okay. morally yeah. weighed down. Yeah. Okay. As a leader, how do you, how do you suggest that uh, we should be uh, approaching that? Okay, way? fantastic. Thanks again. That's a great question and thanks for clarifying. So. I put it uh, up there, but I need to emphasize this. Failing fast is not just something that's okay. It has to be embraced, okay? <laughs> because you're gonna fail so many times. So luckily for me, I was a bouncer when I was younger. So I got people screaming and yelling at me for many years. So I'm used to failing. People telling me that I'm not worth anything, right? Trying to pick a fight with me. So. So, but it, it, it is a personal characteristic to be able to deal with it. So, you know what, you know, we failed, let's move on. Let's, can we, can we do it 10% different? Can we go to the right, to the left? So, but you all, you need the environment, meaning the leadership that supports it, uh, right? Because people may be looking at your team and go, okay, this is our innovation team. Um, but uh, the leadership, it starts with leadership that says failure is fine, all right? But it'd be nice to get a win once in a while, right? Yeah. But if you, if you, look, but if you look at, um, um, I can take one of the past companies I was with, um, probably 75 to 80% of the uh, POCs that was built did not go into production. So 20% is probably a good hit rate um, as well as it is for a venture capital firm. They invest in 10, maybe one makes it. It's the same with this. Maybe you build 10 POCs, maybe one will get enough oxygen to move on. That That's great, Shell. Uh, I think we are on time now. It's 53 minutes. We're going to wrap it now. Uh, and and, and he, you've given a lot of suggestions. Any, any last word to all the viewers who have been us for the last 50, 55 minutes? Anything that you would like to say, and then we'll just wrap it. Yeah. Uh, I want you to look at my screen. Can you see it? Yeah, sure. Uh, I, let me bring it to the broadcast. There you go. I <laughs> okay. So, um, no, Les, I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, thanks for attending. Hopefully you learned something. And I want to thank uh, Simon and Mahesh and the C Sharp team and look forward to uh, do it again or, or a different topic. So um, thanks again. That's good. That's good. So uh, uh, we have one more session uh, coming this Thursday on 28th of May, uh, 10 a.m. EST by our c Sharp Corner MVP, Abzal Ahmed Zishan. He's going to talk about serverless computing and which different cloud services to choose. So that is something maybe you want to join. So having said that, Shell, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. That was an incredible live session that you brought. People loved your quizzes and the different tips that you have given. Uh, tons of resources and learning to be taken away from this session. Uh, I, on behalf of entire C Sharp Corner and its millions of users, want to thank you for your valuable time. And we hope to see you soon in the near future. Thank you, Shell. Absolutely.